This visualization explores the nature and essence of the earth mind. You can listen to this with your eyes closed, or even when out in nature while walking, or just sitting looking at a view. Wherever you are, before you start, just take five deep in and out belly breaths. And as you breathe in, imagine the breath is coming all the way from the earth, up your spine and to your crown. And as you breathe out, imagine the breath is coming all the way down from your head, through your heart, through your pelvis, into the floor and back to the earth mind. Just do that five times. Now unless we get up in an aeroplane, most of us consider the Earth to be flat. This is a natural assumption. When early explorers didn't fall off the edge, and when astronauts and space probes looked back at the Earth, we gained a new level of understanding and comprehension. We now know the Earth is a roundish object spinning on its axis with the moon in close attendance. What is less known is as the moon revolves around the Earth, its gravity pulls the surface of the Earth up and down a little. So you can think of the Earth as breathing in and out every 28 days or so. As the Earth and moon perform this dance together, they orbit around a medium-sized star we call the Sun, somewhere near the middle of a spiral arm of our galaxy. And this star is just one of billions of stars in billions of galaxies. But as far as we know, the Earth is pretty special, as it has us on it, looking outwardly and inwardly. And we are able to ask questions like, how did we get here? Why are we here? And what is the purpose of life? And just reflect and muse on the nature of the earth. Our special home planet consists mainly of rock some of which is molten in the core, and around 80% of which is solid or semi-solid in the mantle and outer layers. But when viewed from space, the Earth looks like a planet of water. With over 70% of its surface covered by the oceans. But the water in the oceans, rivers, lakes and atmosphere is only about 10% of the water that's thought to be trapped in the rocks of the earth. And enveloping the earth is a thin layer of atmosphere we call air. And several miles up from the top of the atmosphere the Earth is surrounded by a magnetosphere created by the spinning liquid core of the planet that protects all life forms from the ravages of cosmic rays. So all in all, our planet consists mainly of rock, water and air 
protected and cocooned by a powerful spinning magnetic dynamo. But our planet Earth has another secret up its sleeve. Just muse on this. Our heart beats without us having to think about it. You can envisage that the intelligence that knows how to recirculate the blood around our system and pump the blood to where it's needed is contained in the muscles around our heart. They know exactly how to fire in synchronism. Our heart and its muscles have a level of consciousness independent of our conscious mind. In the same way, you can think of the Earth and other planets as having this base level of consciousness. They know how to be a planet. The Sun and the Earth also work in harmony, with our planet maintaining an orbit that keeps the temperature relatively stable so the water doesn't evaporate into space. The core knows how to spin to create our protective magnetic field. The rocks know how to support the oceans, land masses, and how to grow into mountains. Some of the rock even gains more consciousness when it is formed under great pressure in the crystals. At the same time, the water in our oceans knows how to form currents, how to evaporate into the air to form clouds, and how to fall back to the earth again in the form of rain. The atmosphere of the earth is something rather special though. Without life on the planet, the atmosphere would be like that of Mars and Venus, which is largely carbon dioxide. It is the life on the planet that gives rise to another level of consciousness. This consciousness is sometimes referred to as Gaia, the consciousness level of a living planet. This gives rise to the ability of the planet to create and maintain conditions for life to flourish. Plants absorb carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. So, if you're out in nature right now, give thanks to all that is green around you. Without it, you would not be alive to see it and appreciate it. Plant life also has a level of consciousness. It knows when to hibernate, to germinate and to blossom. It knows how to absorb sunlight, which powers its ability to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. And some plants are really smart. They use scent and color and shape to attract birds and insects to them, to aid them in reproduction, distribution and repollination. What is really clever about planet Earth is that the percentage of its mass that makes it a living planet is minuscule, about 0.000002% of the planet forms what is known as the biomass. Most of the biomass is concentrated in microbes and in plants on both land and the sea. Termites and worms and marine organisms like plankton and krill form the next highest percentage of the biomass. Together, this level of consciousness formed most of the Earth's intelligence for billions of years. 
When flying insects and fish appeared, things got much more interesting. The Earth had spawned life with new senses. Self-propelled life forms like this gave Gaia the ability to perceive itself from the air and to move around the oceans and the land. This in turn gave rise to an explosion of life forms and awareness in the many forms we see of life today, with amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals and us. But when it comes to us, the total of all 7 billion or more humans together only represents about 0.0001% of the total biomass. Yet about 20% of all food production across the planet is geared towards providing food for human consumption. While this might seem somewhat greedy, consider this. What if we had a very special role in the evolution of the Earth mind, along with other sentient self-aware creatures like primates, dolphins and whales, and perhaps octopi and even some birds? What if the Earth mind consisted of three layers? Just like the mind of humans and other animals. The first layer has the knowledge of how to be a planet. The second layer has the knowledge of how to spawn life. The third layer has the knowledge of how to become aware of itself. And then through us and all other life forms the Earth has evolved to become aware of itself. And through the self-aware life forms, the Earth connects to the rest of the cosmos and becomes aware of its place in the scheme of things. And through our awareness and connection to the cosmos, other planets become able to reproduce the success of Mother Earth. And just imagine this, what if every single human on planet Earth was in training to be a guardian for another planet? Now that would be one amazing trick to pull off for the Earth mind.